Nearly a year into COVID and adapting to online video chat rooms, you're not alone if you're feeling a little Zoom fatigue. The Psychiatric Times reports that with everyone hopping onto Zoom during this pandemic, it is natural to feel tired, worried, or quite simply burnt out. Partly they claim the central reason we feel Zoom fatigued is that at our core of our psychological makeup is the need for a rewards cost trade-off. Though this is an unconscious part of our biological makeup, the challenge is that every minor decision is elevated when our minds are attempting to assess the reward gained by staring at a screen and attempting to connect with others. Typically, when we're interacting with people, we spend energy attempting to stay in that moment, focused on what is being said. And our brains are constantly assessing the energy needed to concentrate while problem solving or assessing that situation. Fatigue sets in because during the social interaction, our brains use visual and audio cues about our interactions. But in a video chat, our minds are working harder to process nonverbal facial expressions and due to potential delays, video frame freezes, echoes and technical glitches, during that Zoom session, our minds react on an unconscious level to those glitches attempting to sort out what kind of response is merited during the online conversation. In addition, as our eyes only see so many frames per second, our brains are forced to fill in the gaps as well as attempting to sort the images in front of us so that they make sense. And as it relates to eye fatigue, for some, they are left with an uncomfortable feeling or concern that they were not fully focused on some important detail during the Zoom session. Marissa Schaffler, an associate professor at Clemson University who studies workplace well-being, says an added factor is that when we are physically on camera, we are very aware we are being watched as though someone's watching you. So there comes the social pressure and feeling like you need to perform, which is nerve wracking, anxiety producing and stressful. Thus, she says, you just feel worn out. Most of us might opt to just turn it off. However, though a possible solution, it just isn't practical as Zoom is used for work, for school, for meetings, for worship, and to connect with family and friends. Thankfully, Liz Foslin and Molly West Duffy offer some reasonable tips to avoid expect experiencing Zoom fatigue. They suggest one avoids multitasking while in a Zoom session. It's important to remain focused on the session and schedule those other tasks for a later time. Prior to a Zoom session they offer, they suggest taking a mini break step away from the computer screen or simply close one's eyes even for a few seconds. This will create a sense of rest, especially for your visual senses. They also suggest reducing on-screen stimuli. Research, they say, shows that when we are in Zoom, we tend to spend a lot of time studying the backgrounds of those we are in Zoom sessions with. So say you're on a call with five people. You may feel like you're in five different rooms at once. You can see their furniture, their plants, and their wallpaper. You might even see the titles of the books they have on their shelves behind them. All of this visual stimulus creates mental fatigue, and therefore they encourage persons to use plain backgrounds and to invite persons in the Zoom session with you to do the same. Seeing a plain background in Zoom will also reduce anxiety. Earlier this week, I experienced that firsthand as in the Zoom session I was in, it was funny that every one of us on that Zoom session had the same color of paint in the background. So it kind of gave the experience that we were in the same room together. And actually I felt relaxed during and after the session, which mirrors the research that when we visually feel we're in the same place, our minds relax as though we're in a familiar environment. Instead of feeling like we were transported through Zoom to an unfamiliar location, as if you're in exile, which is the reality Isaiah's audience was suffering. The people were in exile and they were isolated and far from their homes. 
They were stuck in a situation they didn't like, and they, like us, wondered if there was any type of escape from the grief and terrible stress they experienced. They were eager to leave the unfamiliar and return to normalcy. In Isaiah 40, God announced to the prophet that relief was on the way and that they would soon escape their situation and their lives and way of life would be restored. God announced a new covenant, which God declared would dwell with the people and they would be fed and protected just as a shepherd feeds and protects their flock. Fatigued from their situation, this was precisely what the people needed to hear as they recalled that God is the creator who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand. God recognized they were fatigued and essentially had zoomed out. So through Isaiah's proclamation, God brought a welcome promise of relief as they were informed that God was mindful of their situation and was preparing a way for them to escape their dilemma so that they would suffer no longer. Isaiah called out, have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. With this proclamation, he pointed out that God is the one who created the ends of the earth, and nothing escapes God's notice, and nothing wears God out. Isaiah emphasized the point that God does not become exhausted, declaring God does not faint nor grow weary. Plus, not only does God not grow exhausted, the Lord gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. God gives renewed energy to those who rely on the Lord. One of the challenges we have experienced in this pandemic is that a number of people believe in their own abilities, and they believe they can deal with their fatigue by doing it their own way. Instead of resting in God and waiting patiently with God, there are some who are constantly turning to Facebook and their digital screens, hoping to gain inspiration or renewed energy from these. But as research shows, spending time on Zoom and then immediately shifting our attention to other digital items only leaves us more tired, more anxious, and even more Zoomed out. Addressing our weary minds God invites us to bring our worries and our fatigue and hand them over. Release your burdens and share them with the Lord. Then sit in silence. Perhaps find a plain space so our senses are not overwhelmed and where our minds and eyes are not distracted. Even simply closing them will suffice. And then just sit patiently with the Lord. Spending time with God by stopping our thoughts and creating silence may seem counterproductive, but doing so would allow us to release our fatigue and our worries to God. This allows us to take a break with God, being mindful of what God has accomplished for us and what God has in store for our lives. Focusing solely on God, we're able to see God's midst and recognizing that in Christ we are restored and saved for God's good things. Freed from distractions and anxiety, we discover God has clothed us with love, and resting in God, we are wrapped and embraced by God's loving hands. The very hands that sculpted the mountains and lifted the earth which formed the seas, these are the hands that can give us rest. These are the hands that cradle us. And these are the hands that nourish and strengthen us so we are no longer weary or fatigued. Resting in God, we can rise energized. And similar to Isaiah's audience, we can once again embrace the day, recognizing that God is preparing a way for us to break free from our isolation. God's tender care can give us rest so we don't grow weary or discouraged. And God's new covenant with us is a promise that we are being prepared to enter the greatness that God has created. We are receiving God's renewal, so we are no longer zoomed out in exhaustion. Instead, we are able to zoom in into God. We're able to zoom into God's purpose and promise. We're able to zoom into God's mission for the world, which is to offer healing and wholeness to our neighbors and to our communities. Renewed, we can offer our lives and attention so persons can release and be released from their exhaustion and grief. Zooming into God, the Lord can utilize us to provide the world a glimpse of things to come 
and we can provide the world with the good news that God is liberating us from COVID and that God is restoring our energy so we can offer the actions and words of hope that the world requires so it too can zoom into God. As God restores our energy, let us receive as we in turn offer the hope, the peace, and the love of God. Amen.